Hello guys and gals and welcome to a new tutorial. In this video we're going to be covering a vertex animation using 3ds Max and Max scripts and bringing those into UE4 so that we can have lovely little dancing meshes like this without the need for actual animations or, ske uh, or skeletal meshes and skeletons. So you can see here this is just a static mesh which I can rotate around, I can move it as much as we want to and it won't change the animation. Similarly, if I was to get rid of the material, you can see it stops dancing because it's entirely done through our material. Yay! So, the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to delete all of this because we're not going to need it. I'm just going to create a new folder here and just call it tutorial. Oh, indeed. There we are. And what we're going to do now is we're going to open up a 3DS Max. You can see here that I already have them all set up, so we're going to get rid of these. Goodbye, everything. There we are. And we're going to start this fresh. So, the first thing that you're going to want to do is obviously get your hands on 3DS Max. Now, the tools that are provided by Unreal only work for 3DS Max. You can get Max as a student for free, you just can't use it in any of your... Um, any of your paid projects. Um, you can only use it for learning purposes which is what we're doing today, so it's fine. Yay! But I implore you, if you are a student, please download this. Uh, it's great to be good in multiple uh, different uh, programs because skills are required in the industry. Yay! So, the first thing we're going to do is head to Customize, then head to Unit Setup, go to System Unit Setup, and then just change your units to centimeters. By default, this will be inches. But of course, inches are not the same as a centimeter. I think an inch is like 2.4 centimeters each. Uh, and Unreal uses centimeters as units by default. So to make sure that your units are converting correctly, let's make sure that you set up centimeters inside of max. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a standard primitive, in our case, a teapot. So we're going to select teapot, click and drag to make a teapot of any size that you wish. We'll press W on the keyboard to switch to our movement widget. And then down here with our coordinates, we're just going to right click the little arrows to make sure that they are all at 0, 0, 0, so that our origin point is going to be accurate inside of Unreal. The next thing that we'll do is we'll right click, convert to editable poly. So this is now no longer just a standard primitive. It is now a poly mesh that we can play with, ready for importing into Unreal. Most of the modifiers in 3DS will still work to an extent with a primitive, but sometimes you just get a little bit of a janky result. So it's best to turn them into polys before you get working on them. So what we're going to need are some keyframes. Obviously we want our teapot to animate, but we're going to need to know how we want to move it. And we're going to be using morph targets, which will require some different uh, keys or targets for us to use to push the verts of our main object, in our case, the teapot. So we'll hold shift and then drag on the Y do, 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 to make a clone. And we're just gonna make three of these because we're going to have three different points for our teapot to move to. One to the left, one to the right, and one where it bounces up and down. So with the first teapot, well, the first clone, which we have here as teapot002. We're going to head into the modifier list and we're going to search for bend to create a bend modifier. And we're going to set the angle to 30 and the direction to 90, which will give us a nicer bend to the left. And then on the second bend, this time we will go at negative 30, direction 90 to get to the right. And for teapot four, we're going to use a stretch. And we're just going to set the stretch value to 0.3 because it's defaulted to Z and this will stretch it upwards. Now we have our three main keyframes. We're going to select our teapot that we're going to be animating, which is currently located at 000. And we will head to our modifier list and we will search for morpher and press enter. Now we've got a morpher on here. We can assign it different morph targets and then animate them. So we're going to click load multiple targets with our morpher selected and we'll have a little list you've got two, three, and four, those are the ones that we've set up with nice little deformations. And we'll press load, and I can see that they've activated in these little buttons here. Yay! 
they're ready to be used. So next, down on the bottom here, by all of our key settings, we have time configuration. We're going to click this and set our end time to 40 frames. I think by default it's around 80 or 90. We're going to set that to 40 and press OK. And now you'll see that your little time slide down here only goes up to 40 frames. We can move this along. Nothing will happen because nothing's currently animated. But we can now start adding our frames in. So what we're going to do is we're going to click this button for auto key and that's going to register any change that we make and turn a key on our little animation slider that will show us that we've changed something and then you know it will automatically animate for us based on our changes. We're going to be careful here because we don't want to accidentally add any frames that we don't want. What we'll first do is we will default our teapot to the left position. Now the way that morph targets work is in this little list here with our targets, you can see we have two, three, and four. The number next to them is the current weighting. So zero would be we're not using that at all. And 100 would be we're using that in its entirety. In this case, 100 on two, we'll tip it to the left. Now we'll move along to frame number 10. And in frame 10, we're going to set this to 50. And three is also going to be set to 50. And that's going to give us a midpoint between left and right. And we're just doing this because we don't want it to move too quickly. We want it to be quite a, like, quite a nice blend. Uh, and then on four, we're going to set it to 100, which will make our teapot bounce upwards. We'll move our key to 80, uh, to 20 rather. Whoa. <laughs> and then we're going to make the values zero. And then we want to tip to the right. So 100% on the right and zero. So we squish back down. Then we'll move to 30. And this time we want to be bouncing towards the left. So 50, 50, and then upwards 100, like so. And then we'll move to 40. And we know that we're going to be on the left. So 100, 0, and all the way down, 0. And now if we were to press play, we should have a nice looping animation with our little teapot bouncing up and down, left and right, like so. Yay, cool little dancing teapot. We're going to press pause. And we're going to turn off auto key because we don't want to accidentally change anything here. And the next thing that we're going to need is the actual tool. So in our case here, what you need to head to is wherever you have your Unreal Engine installed. In my case, it's in program files, Epic Games before 4.22. We're going to open up engine, head into our extras folder. 3ds Max scripts, and this is where you'll find the vertex animation tools. We'll drag this directly into our 3ds Max window, and that will open it up for us in our project. And you can see here it's got our animation end listed as 40. Now, if we were to just go ahead and process here, it's going to break because we have some keyframes at 40, and for whatever reason, the tool requires an extra frame for a buffer. So we're going to set that to 41, like so. And then making sure that we are on animated meshes, we're going to press a process animated meshes. And when we do, it's going to create lots of new meshes for us on the side here. Don't worry about it. It will clean those up. It's just saving each one of those as a different frame. And now we have a save prompt. We're going to head into our folder. We'll put T underscore dance. You can see here it's saving as type EXR. This is a type of texture. We're going to leave that alone and press save like so we can minimize down the tool now and you can see now on our little list of meshes here you can also see that it's got another one here you can actually see it in the window we've got some green in there instead of pink it's created us a new mesh now this new mesh you can see here it says morph uv2 underscore morph export the reason it's done this is because this requires two extra sets of uvs for us to manipulate our verts with using these textures inside of unreal so it's created us a specific mesh that will work with the texture that we just saved. With that mesh selected, file, export, export selected, head to the folder we've got it in, sm underscore dance, or whatever you want to call it, press OK. And now we're going to head back over to the engine. It's recognized that I have some changes here, so I'm just going to press import, and then we're going to just, with the mesh, turn off remove degenerates, and then Make sure that textures is also unticked. So import textures unticked. Press import, like so. 
there we are and now you can see already here there we go it's just brought it in you have an extra texture now if these didn't appear for you just press import find wherever you save them and bring them in in my case in the tutorial folder choose them and then bring those in manually before we can use them we need to change some settings here so the first thing that we're going to do is open up our dance uv1 texture and we're just going to change some of the compression settings to make sure that it's working the way that we need it to the compression settings we're going to leave on hdr our texture group we will change to ui then we are going to set our srgb to off which it already has done for us which is nice and our filter will uh, we'll turn that to nearest and we'll press save so that's all done in there yep that's fine we will open up the normals texture here we'll change the compression settings to a vector displacement map and again texture group to ui make sure that srgb is turned off and change our filter to nearest and then press save now that our two textures are set up we're just going to quickly change our mesh a little bit so we're going to open up the mesh here and by default this is what you'll be greeted with now with in the details panel head to build settings under lod zero open this up and what we're going to do is make sure that remove degenerates is turned off which we've already done when we've imported it but then we're also going to set our distance field resolution scale to zero and press apply changes and then save just saving won't apply the lod change so if you haven't turned off your degenerates by now and haven't set this one down to zero and pressed apply just pressing save isn't going to apply them but when you close this window if you haven't applied any changes it will ask you if you want to apply them just say yes and then your mesh is ready to go so we can bring uh, bring our mesh into the world here and you can see now we've just got a lonely little teapot poor little teapot and he's not moving and the reason he's not moving is because we need a material so right click material m underscore dance and now we'll just assign that to our teapot and open this up with it open we're just going to minimize the window and grab our two textures and drag those into our material window and now what we're going to do because as i said earlier we need two more uv channels the reason we need two more UV channels is because the channel zero by default is going to be what's used for our regular textures in case you wanted to paint the teapot a specific way. And then UV one is used by default for your light maps. So we need three and four to be given to us. We need access to three, uh, to two and three rather, which are three and four. It's an array, it starts at zero. Don't kill me, please. So to get these under details, we're gonna search for UV and we'll find number, a number of customized UVs. We know we need numbers two and three, so we have to set this to four. And now you can see on our material node here, we have zero, one, two, and three. Huzzah, so that's ready. And then we're just going to make sure the tangent space normal is turned off in the material, like so. And now we just need to right click, search for MS underscore vertex animation tools morph targets. And now you can see here we have a texture and a normal available to us. We have a normals and we have another one which is just a texture. But we can't plug these straight in because these are texture samples and we need texture 2Ds. So we're going to right click and then convert to texture object on both of them. Plug the normals into morph normal. The regular texture which is UV1 into morph texture. Then we're going to hold one and left click or a constant, and we'll plug this into number of morph targets. We know that we have 40 frames with a buffer of one, which is 41. So we're gonna set our number to 41 here. And then the pixel shader world, world and normal vertex, uh, vertex normal rather, we plug into normal and the world position offset into world position offset. Custom UV2 obviously into two, custom UV3 into three, like so. Now by default, this is just going to make our little sphere turn into a weird blobby mess. We're going to choose our static mesh here, which is dense, and then click ironically the little teapot, which is the preview. Set our current preview into our teapot here. If we press apply, we should hopefully get a black dancing teapot like so. Yay. There we are. We have a black dancing teapot. I don't know, we can see we've got some 
weird funkiness going on right there at the top, which we will try to fix now. So, see, these may have been missed somewhere. Let's see. Better displacement is fine. Nearest, yes. Never stream. SRGB. No maps. Yeah, that one should be fine. And this guy here. UI no maps, that should be nearest. We'll just try this up. Got compressed really quick. And wait for that to catch up. This is where it starts taking forever to Data compile, come on Unreal, catch up. Right, I can see here we're still getting some slightly funky results. So we'll open the mesh up. Perhaps we changed the wrong thing on the mesh. And in fact, we have, I've forgotten to turn on, use a full precision UVs. We're going to turn this on, press apply changes, and now you can see it's immediately fixed this uh, because we weren't actually telling the mesh to use the extra UV channels. So there we go. One little oversight can break everything. We'll press save right there. And now what we can do is we can hold a V and left click in our material for a vector. We'll call this our color and we'll plug this into base color like so. And we're just going to default this to something nice like a sort of salmon color and now you can see that our animation is going quite slow and to control the time of our animation we're going to be using morph animation scalar here in our material now we could control this manually via a blueprint if we were just using this scalar parameter but if we wanted it to just sit in the world and dance what we're going to do is right click find time hold m and left click for a multiply and we'll plug this into morph animation Right click B to promote to a parameter and we'll call this speed. And we'll default this to 1.5 and we'll press apply. But now we have a color parameter and a speed parameter and now you can see it's really going for it. We've got a little bit of a C3 piece here because we can see inside the teapot. So we're just going to turn on two sided really quick. Press apply. There we are. And now we can't see through the teapot, we can see into it, yay! We'll close this down really quick. We will scale up our teapot. We want a large dancing teapot. Make a copy, shrink this guy down, like so. Make a copy of him. Select both copies, we'll right click our material, create material instance, drag that into our material. Open this guy up. And now we have access to our color and our speed. We can change the color to any color that we like. Go with the green and we can make it go at any speed that we like. But obviously we don't want it to be a little bit, you know, we don't want it to be too crazy. So we'll maybe set it to really slow. Little jigs, little jigs. There you go. Now, obviously you don't have to use teapots. You can use any uh, sort of mesh that you want. I just use teapot because the, uh, the documentation on the Unreal website also uses a teapot, so if you go and check out the documentation, it won't be too alien to you because you'll be seeing something very, very similar. Uh, a teapot, yay! But there you go, that's how you can set up a vertex animation using a material in UE4 from 3ds Max. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you guys next time, bye bye.